questions at this point? Ooh, Chuck's here. All right, well, we'll move on. I'd like to acknowledge Darren. Darren Davis is here today. He is uh, my counterpart here at Main EMS. We work collaboratively together on all of this stuff. And Darren has done what I would say is a, a mountain of work on uh, some items of this transition. And he probably hates me because every day I'll tell him, ah, I changed one thing on the run for him. And then he's got to redo almost all of his work. So, so everybody welcome Darren. Thank you for joining us, Darren. I really, really appreciate all your help. So, uh, continuing on. Uh, what is Nemesis 3.5? Uh, Nemesis is the new a new data set. We're on version 3.4 right now of the Nemesis data set. And 3.5 is a new way of describing the whole EMS event. It's not just about the dispositions, because as many of you have heard, heard me say many times before one of the major changes to the data set is the dispositions but that's not the only thing changing uh so the goal of this is to improve the ability and flexibility to fully describe uh the ems event way in a way that couldn't be done before and an example of that is and, uh, and i'll continue to say this if you look at the disp incident patient disposition that's available now, um, uh, in the run form, you'll see that there's a, a disposition of treated and transported by this EMS unit. Well, that's one value um, that answers two things. You treated the patient and you transported them, right? In, in the new data set in 3.5, those dispositions, which we talked about last week, um, and I'm sure we'll circle back around to again at some point, there is that disposition set gets broken down into four dispositions. So there is a <clears throat> uh, a unit disposition, which describes whether or not you made patient contact, uh, a crew disposition, an evaluation and care disposition, and a transport disposition. And there's also a, a reason for refusal disposition, but we've been actually using that value for quite some time now. So not that significant of a change for us. And I'll, I will pause frequently and ask if anybody has any questions or comments and uh, feel free to, again, use those features, the chat, Q&A, raise your hand or uh, have a verbal outburst. Okay, carrying on. Today, we're gonna talk about the type of service requested. The, the data element for this field is eresponse.05. Um, Yes, Jason, we covered what is Nipsis. And if you continue to have those outbursts, I will put you back in the meeting. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, or am I? Uh, the type of service requested uh, is the category of service requested of the EMS agency responding uh, for this specific EMS event. Um, the EMS event or the values that we'll have active are right here. And one of the major things that you'll see is these fields here now say emergency response, primary response area. These first three values uh, are the same code, like behind the scenes, each value is assigned a code. These are the same codes as the values that we're currently using because we ha currently have a 911 response scene, Intercept and mutual aid are our three um, values that I would say Darren and I often use when we consider emergency responses, um, but they've been added an emergency response in front of all of them uh, to delineate better. You know, are you responding to your primary response area? Are you intercepting another unit? Or are you providing mutual aid, which is outside of your primary response area? Um, I think this will be a little bit of a learning curve for EMS clinicians when they're when they're documenting, um, but it makes logical sense to me. So uh, the transfer portions uh, is also a significant change. You'll notice from here that we don't have um, PIFT or specialty care transport as an option in the type of service requested, which we currently have now. Those are actually custom values that we we somehow relabeled and squeezed into the system, but they won't be here um, in 3.5 uh, because PIFT or specialty care 
is it the type of service requested? The type of service requested is, are you going from a hospital to a hospital or a hospital to a non-hospital, uh, a non-hospital to a hospital? Those are the types of service that are requested. PIFT or specialty care, um, ALS or BLS, that's the level of service provider, the CMS service level um, that's collected in another element on the roof. And then we have the public assist, standby, so on and so forth. Um, any any questions so far? I'm also not afraid to call on people by name. So if anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. So I'm gonna, I'll I see Mike Senecal's here, and I'm I, I know Mike pretty well. Mike, do you think that uh, that is going to be a challenge at all for the crews or Stephen, both from the same agency? Um, when it comes to documenting, not having the ability to select it's a PIFT from the type of service requested, or will it be kind of uh, okay from uh, the billing perspective to select that in the service level? So I'll jump in here, uh, Jason. It's going to be just fine because most people have the structure or have the the inability to figure out what the difference between medical transport and interfacility is. Um, so this is going to be cleared up. And most people pick transfer or interfacility transfer now and then just click the PIFT in the CMS level. So I think that it's not going to be a big problem for us at all. I'm actually looking forward to it. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so I do have a question in the chat and a question in the QA. I'll take the chat first. Uh, and the question is, as a dispatch center, when will the training be for us to enter the number of compliant versus non-compliant calls? Uh, if you need training on that, we can provide that for you. I would just ask that you uh, reach out to Melissa Adams, and then we can piece that training together for you. Okay? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bill, did you have a question? I see you've unmuted. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we we basically just respond to uh, nine one one calls, and you know sometimes we do get called out to a our secondary response area. But I'm just wondering whether or not my people will sort of understand. I mean, we don't necessarily ever see any other services, so mutual aid doesn't really sound like it's the right thing for that situation. And I'm wondering whether or not there might be a different description of it. So, Bill, I think you're you're down from uh, Memorial Ambience, correct? That's correct. So, if so, just to, for instance, if Memorial was called to respond for uh, Peninsula's response area, right. that would be that would be mutual aid, right? Because you're not responding to your primary response area; you're you're going to cover another agency's primary response area. But if that's not a typical occurrence for you folks, then that won't be something typical that your crew will have to document. Um, however, if you find that your crew is documenting a response to like Blue Hill, for instance, um, that's outside of your primary coverage area, but they're um, and they're not documenting it as a mutual aid, that would be something that you guys could catch in your Q, uh, QI reviews to say, um, you know, great job documenting next time for responses outside of our primary response area, uh, please select the emergency response mutual aid for the type of service requested. So does that make sense to you, Bill? Uh, yes, understood. It's just, um, I'm wondering whether or not it's, if instead it said um, secondary response area instead of mutual aid, that would be clearer to people than they would automatically pick it without us having to explain to them. <laughs> I think it's actually consistent with the terminology that we use in our rules uh, because we, in our rules uh, and our rule expert, Jason Cooney is here, um, who can attest to this. We tell folks that they have to provide adequate coverage um, through having significant uh, a, enough crew to provide coverage or through mutual aid agreements. So I'm wondering if it's just that it's consistent with the language that we have in our rules um, that we should leave it that way. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just that our basic EMTs don't 
necessarily understand those nuances of the rules and so on. It's uh, that's to you know mutual aid coverage or not. It's to sure. Um. Yes. So, um. One other question in chat: Could you give examples of what mobile integrated healthcare encounter and evaluation for special referral intake programs are? So, I actually think those two items, those are there for community paramedicine. Um, but we will have our community health module stood up as well, and those won't be available in the nine. At, those won't be visible in the 911 run form, but they will be visible as a data element in the community health form. So, and I also have a question from Kathy. What is support services? And so, uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to that in one second, where I'll give you a resource where you can find out um, some further information about these items. Well. Uh, I do do DJ work. I'll get out my spin table after my afterwards. So, um, okay. So thank you for that. That was a change. Um, this is the Nemesis 3.5 data dictionary. And um, you can scan this QR code. This is the digital version of the Nemesis 3.5 data dictionary. It is an awesome resource uh, for your, for you, for your crews to be able to look at. And if you have questions on elements, when we say this is a Nemesis required field, this document will also help explain why um, why some of these elements are required. Um, very good resource. I use this daily um, and I share it with someone almost at least twice a week. So I would encourage folks to scan that QR code and, and check that data dictionary out. Um, one more QR code coming at you. This is the extended data definitions. So what the Nemesis 3.5 data dictionary does is tell you this is the element and this is what the element means. And these are the options that are available under the element, right? So for instance, eResponse.05 had an option for um, support services. The de extended data def definitions will tell you what that means, what support services means. So I'd also encourage everyone to download, to scan this QR code uh, if you have the opportunity or the capability to do so. Um, you could do it by opening the camera on your smartphone and pointing at the screen um, and the QR code should open. Um, oh, great, it doesn't work. Well, I'll tell you what, let me get this uh, extended data definition link and I will put it in the chat. Um, for everyone and we will go from there do, do, do and i close my screen sharing i don't know why do 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 edit copy everyone and there is the link for the uh qr code and why did my presentation go away? Oh, I know why. Okay. So anyway. So hey, Jason, while you're bringing the presentation back up, uh, I, um, I also wanted to mention that if you recall a little bit earlier, Jason said that I get frustrated with him when he goes and make changes to the new patient care report. And that's because one of my responsibilities is trying to produce a, a guidebook uh, to use the main EMS patient care report. And it includes, uh, you know, the data elements that we use and the values and, and where we've been able to find definitions like these extended data definitions, all of that will be in there as well. Uh, of course, when he goes and moves things around on the form, I have to move things around in the guidebook. So, uh, um, but know that we hope to publish that. Uh, gee, I, I'm not sure I've given any commitment, but I, I'm thinking that we can have an early version of that to coincide with the release of the training. How's that? Sorry for the 404 code error. I, uh, um, 
Josh, I will I will make if you could throw your email in the chat, I will definitely send you the link via email. Um all right, thank you, Mike, for confirming that. <clears throat> uh let's see. All right, let me start my presentation again. I don't know where I left off. Do do do, do present present view present. Now go share. Share. I apologize for the technical difficulties um, that I've experienced here today. So, all right. So ignore the QR code for the three five data definitions. I tried that myself, and I can confirm to you that everyone is right. Not that I need to do that, but um, it seems that Desemzo has disabled that link. So I will update that QR code with the new link. Um, do, 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 uh, okay. So we've established that that works. Okay. So the new form is available, right? If you want to try out the new form, please navigate to, uh, our website, main.gov forward slash EMS, click on the Mefers tab on that page, and then log into our test site using the login information that is on the Mefers page on the main EMS website. It will take you to the run form. The default form on that page is EMS run report 5.0. Uh, the Death Star plans and the how to build your own Iron Man suit plans, those will not work. They are just there for show because I'm a, I'm a total geek and I wanted something entertaining to put in the training. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, I see Chrissy's and mutual aid is requested by the home agency IC. A better term might be automatic aid or use the primary sponsor. For example, an LMT covers all of Panama County, even though there are other ambulance services embedded in their service area. That's a fair point, Chris. Um, sorry, Steve. It is what it is, right? So, um, do, 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 uh, do, do. okay. Thank you, Josh. I will post that and uh, done. Okay. So try out the new form uh, at, as, at your leisure and the the agencies that have volunteered to go early. I've had a bunch of agencies volunteer to go early. There's three that are going to go first um, as our guinea pigs, I mean, our trial agencies, and they're going to um, uh, help us flush out the errors, right? Because there's one that I'd actually like to speak about, right? We had on here last week, uh, uh, one of the one of the errors come up, and I can show you that if it's still open. Let me see. Yep, it is. So I will uh, stop. No breakout rooms. Share screen. So in the run form on the disposition screen, right? There's uh all the all the dispositions that are available and um uh one of our friends from Wyndham Fire last week pointed out something to us an error that came up uh when they were going through and it's the unit made patient contact uh the patient was evaluated and refused care no care was required or refused care and evaluation um but you transport the patient right so now you have to select the crew disposition. What did the crew do? So the values that are available for this are over here. Initiated and continued primary care, initiated primary care, transferred to another EMS crew. That one doesn't make sense because you transported this patient. Um, this one doesn't make sense because you transported. Um, and this one doesn't make sense because, uh, well, it could make sense, right? Um, assume primary care from another EMS crew. Uh, but the validation rule, for some reason, only allows one of these last three values. And that's a rule that was written by Nemesis to say, if the patient refuses care, or you basically what it says is if you transport, then it must be evaluated and care provided. So, so after further reflection and much discussion and discussion with other state data coordinators, um, as well as with Nemesis, uh, the correct disposition, crew disposition here, would be initiated and continued primary care. 
and we're going to fix this validation error that shows up right here for this because even if a patient does refuse to allow you to evaluate them and refuse to allow you to care for them, there exists the possibility that if they're in the back of your ambulance while you're transporting them, you can view and observe them and do, you can't do a full assessment, but there are assessment components that can be performed on that patient. Obviously they were alert to the point to say, I don't want any evaluation or care. I just want to ride to the hospital, which I feel is going to be a very rare occurrence, maybe more so in other areas than, than, than the majority. Um, but also too, if you were to consider it from the point of implied consent and the patient was to lose consciousness during that transport, well, now you're going to initiate and continue primary care for that patient would be my hope. Um, and also too, the, the actual physical act of transport to a hospital is providing care. So um, we'll fix this validation error, but um, this came up last week, so folks will see that. But just because Nemesis said it was a, a, an error, it's a warning error, it doesn't fail anything, um, but we'll make the red mark go away if that's the selection that is made. Because if you transport, it doesn't make sense to say that you were back in service, no care, support service required, because if you're transporting, you're not back in service. Um, and incident support services, including Simpson, doesn't make sense. So, all right. Does anybody have any questions that we can answer for them today? Other questions? Brad S., I see you're there. Feel free to unmute, ask questions. I think I know who you are. Anyone at all? Uh, Jason, it's Bill Wigman again. Hey, Bill. Um, so I was wondering if you could describe uh, the transition from the old version to the new version for an individual service. And in particular, at the moment of transition, will every single member of that service be just presented with a new version, whether or not they individually have done any training or? Um, unfortunately, yes, right? So we're not, so we won't have the ability to make sure that every single person does the training before this goes live. Now, once the training goes live, we're going to annoy the heck out of everybody with announcements saying that the training is live. Um, and I'm sure we're going to have to go through a lot of instances of um, resetting passwords and mems, which is what it is, right? Um, but when it comes time for the agency to go live, the you know the date of the cutover when they log into Mefers, they'll be presented with the EMS Run Report 5.0 instead of 4.1, um, and that'll be that will be that. Now that said, we are offering these sessions every Tuesday from now until November 28th. So there's and we're sending an email out every Tuesday morning uh, reminding everybody from now until November 28th that, hey, there's an open forum today so that you can come and talk about and learn about the changes to NEPSIS 3.5. Um, and on September 1st, that education will be ready for people to take and we're gonna make that available to everybody. So as agency leaders, I would really, really, really hope that it, you take it upon yourselves to say, Hey guys, this is going to happen. This is going to be the date that it's going to happen. We'll update every agency as to the date that we're expecting them to transition over. Um, you're going to want to do this training before that date. Um, because if you don't on that date, you're going to log into the run form and you're going to be confronted with this and they're going to have lots of questions to answer. So, um, so unfortunately, yes, and the day that the cutover happens is going to be regardless of whether or not the service has everyone trained. Um, but I think there's a little bit of a impetus on services to affect that training at the local level too. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So Dan, you've asked about uh, billing companies. So in the change notice that we sent out, we reached out, We we that was one of the things that we pointed out. 
Uh, we reached out to several of the largest billing companies that we know of in the state, right? So that included um, Medical Reimbursement Services, Comstar, Northern Light Medical Transport, um, Central Maine Cost Recovery, and I think one other one. I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but it was in the change notice that came out last week. And we reached out to them and we asked them if they were capable of handling the NEMSIS 3.5 um, data. And they all reached out. Oh, and um, uh, Quick Med Claims is the other one. And they all told us that they were ready to go, right? Um, and to receive those. What I would suggest agencies do is uh, once you receive the date that you're going to have to cut over is kind of just give them a heads up. Because um, I know uh, agencies that use uh, Zoll for their billing software or ESO for their billing software, which is a couple of the ones that I talked to, said there's a there's a toggle switch that they have in the run form to select that. And we have done um, a test run with a, a Zoll billing company, and it flowed over through their auto export flawlessly. So I would reach out to your billing company and ask them if they're ready to handle Nexus 3.5 data. If they're not, um, that's something that you'll have to discuss with your billing company. Um, and because I hope they are. So you're welcome. Will any of our existing service questions, service specific would be changing in the new version uh, in service specific districts? So are you talking about like the district question Josh, or are you talking about agency supplemental questions? Agency supplemental questions are still on the run form. They're staying right on the run form. Um, and if you had any specific fields on the run form that you were collecting before those, we haven't, we haven't taken anything away from the run form. All the fields are still there. In a lot of instances, what we've done is we've added some new fields and uh, rewritten some validation. So the only preset values in the systems are ones that I've put on the run form. So if I've added a preset value for, um, you know, for instance, there's a preset value, preset value now for 911 scene transport, um, that preset value is going away because it doesn't work with the new, um, uh, that, that doesn't specifically work with the 3.5 dispositions, right? Um, but also too, there is a preset value that, we have added in terms of delays because delay fields are going to be required right now on 3.4 and the 4.1 run form. The delay fields are defaulted to none, no delay. Um, and we're removing that default um, in 3.5. So there, we did add a preset value to say there's no delays. So folks could select that. Um, but if you're talking about something else that I'm unaware of, then you'll have to let me know specifically. Do, do, do. Anybody else have any other questions for us today? Oh, got one in the QA. Will service specific worksheets carry over? Um, so the only specific worksheets that are there right now I think are on the fire side um I don't know if oh if there so if there's any worksheet that you're using now it will be there because worksheets that are available to services are added to the run form at the system level so any worksheets that are there now will be there in 3.5 so Any any other questions for today? I love these questions, guys. These are, these are great questions. So thank you for asking them. All right. Well, I want to say thank you to everybody for coming and giving me a half hour of your time today to let me uh, ramble on in your ear. Uh, um. 
when you can learn how to spell service, that's when you can get them. Um, just so you know. Um, but uh, thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, somebody asked me when they can get Iron Man suits in service. So, but they spelled service wrong. So anyway, um, the uh, thank you for coming today. I really appreciate everyone's time and your dedication to learning about uh, the run reporting system. Please look forward to that. Um, 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 uh, the training that'll be coming out and more communication from us and encourage your clinicians to join this meeting, right? Um, we've got room for 500 people in here. Um, we've only got 30 today, um, but we can, we can definitely cram more people in. So yes, these sessions are recorded. Um, and yes, I will post them all on YouTube someday. Um, and I will put links to them on our website. Um, I haven't done that yet. Um, but, uh, Thank you for that. Thank you for that question, Chris. That was a good question. So um, if nobody else has any other questions, I'll do a last call for questions. Uh, if not, if you don't have any questions right now, that's fine. If you think of any after the fact, um, please feel free to send me an email. You can send Darren an email. You can email ems.data at main.gov uh, and we'll both see it. Um, or you can call us. Our numbers are on the website. So with that, I appreciate everybody for coming today, and uh, I hope you all have a uh, fantastic day and a safe day and a great week. Thank you.